In the previous step, we were able to create a REST service very easily. In this step, we will understand what is auto configuration. How did all the things that are needed for a REST service to be up and running get configured automatically? Let's look at it in this step. We have the Spring Boot in 10 steps application where we have the at Spring Boot application annotation. The annotation at Spring Boot application indicates that this is a Spring context file. That's number one. Number two, it enables something called auto configuration. Number three, it enables something called component scan. Component scan is one of the important features of Spring where it would start automatically scanning these the classes in this package and this sub package for any beans. So we have added in an annotation at rest controller. This is one of the annotations which is scanned first. So this would be registered as a component. So the book controller would be registered as a bean and it would be managed by the spring framework. There are three things that are essentially done by the at Spring Boot application. It indicates that this is a Spring context. The second thing is the fact that this enables auto configuration. The third thing is that it enables automatic scan of this specific package. Now, we want to look at auto configuration in depth. Spring application dot run method is used to run a Spring context. So I'm giving a Spring context as an input to it and it would be able to run that. The run method also returns something. So it returns a application context. So I'll actually get the application context back. So I'm getting the application context back. This returns the application context. So I'm taking it and I would say application con I would want to loop around it. So for each control one, control space actually, I would want to loop around the application context dot get beans. I want to get the names of all the beans which are configured and I would call this name and I would want to log them. I'll for now use a sysout taking a shortcut here. Ideally I should have been using a logger but I'm a lazy guy. I would go ahead and print all the beans which are present in here. Let's see what would happen. Run as Java application. Okay I'm getting an error saying it's Fail to start because 8080 is already used. Let's see. Yeah, it's already being used. I'll kill that and let's start again. Okay, cool. There are a lot of things that are printed right now. So there are a host of things that are getting configured for us automatically. How are these being configured? That's basically the feature called auto configuration. What Spring Boot does is as part of the Spring Boot framework, there is something called Spring Boot Auto Configure. So if I look at one of the dependencies is Spring Boot Auto Configure. And this Spring Boot Auto Configure has a lot of logic built into it. So you can see that there is a lot of classes that are written. So if you look at the auto configuration jar, it's a very, very, very big jar. And if we go to the web, we will find auto configurations for all the things that we are looking at right now. I'm going in to the auto configure web servlet and you would see something called dispatcher servlet auto configuration. These auto configuration classes are what are creating these beans. What would happen at startup is the Spring Boot framework would trigger the auto configuration jar and it would look through classes which are on the class path. So it would see that, okay, do, do I have a specific class on the class path? It would see that I have a Spring Web MVC framework on the class path. What does the Spring Boot auto configure do? It says, oh, there is Spring Web MVC on the con class path. Then I would need to configure a dispatcher servlet. It would say, oh, there is Spring Web MVC on the class path. So I would need to configure a view resolver. So all those kind of things happen and you'd be able to see all the beans which are created in here. How does auto configuration work? Spring Boot basically looks at two things. One is frameworks available on the class path. This is a website called springboottutorial.com where we have a lot of articles on Spring Boot. I'm referring to one of the articles there. So Spring Boot looks at A, the frameworks which are available on the class path. 
and also b it looks at the existing beans which are configured for the application and based on that it provides the configuration needed so for example if you are using a web starter the basic things that you would need would be a dispatcher servlet you would need a uh, probably some internationalization you would need some messaging all that kind of stuff would get auto configured for you now we are looking at one of the auto configuration beans which is data source auto configuration if you see the code of data source auto configuration which is inside the spring boot auto configure jar you would see that it's conditional on class data source dot class and embedded database type dot class to be present on the class path so what happens is only if these classes are on the class path then this specific bean would be created the data source bean would be only created when these are on the class path you can see the code in here so database auto configuration is conditional on a specific class being available on the class path you can also see another example in here so embedded data source database configuration this is only created when there is no data source when there is no bean created with a data source or a xa data source spring boot would then create an embedded database configuration for us if you want to find out more about what auto configuration is happening what we can do is we can turn on debug logging what i can do is go to application.properties that's one of the files which i have present in here we'll talk about application properties a little later i'm turning on the logging level all that you need to do is say logging dot level dot org dot spring framework is equal to debug this would start the application in a debug mode let me let me kill this up start the application again you can see a lot more logging being printed right now so a lot of things are being printed along with which you would actually have a lot of logging about auto configuration which is printed in here so this will actually say all the stuff which was auto configured and which was not auto configured so it's saying dispatcher servlet auto configuration has matched because i found something of this kind in the class path so it's saying i found a servlet called dispatcher servlet on the class path so i have configured dispatcher servlet automatically it's saying i have configured an error mvc auto configuration i have already configured default error controller i have configured a cache generic cache configuration i have configured jackson for doing binding and i have auto configured validation as well you can also see that there are things like view resolver and everything that were auto configured not only that the auto configuration report also shows what are the things that were not auto configured so it would show why the rest of the auto configuration things did not match and why they were not executed why beans for them were not created auto configuration is a very very important concept regarding spring boot one of the most important things to understand is you are still a beginner with spring boot and auto configuration is something which will grow on you as you keep building more and more spring boot application if the complete concept of auto configuration did not fit in your mind right now that's not a problem at all you would definitely learn it by the time you end this course auto configuration is one of the fundamental things why spring boot is so famous and so easy to use in this step we looked at the basics of auto configuration we looked at some of the beans which were automatically created and also we looked at where the code for spring boot auto configuration is until the next step bye bye